I am Councilwoman Laura Pastor in the heart of the city talking about block watches. I am with Detective Brian Cornegay to talk about block watches. Well, thank what, you for having me here today. What is a block watch? Well, block watch is simply a group of neighbors who get together, they get to know each other and keep an eye on the neighborhood and look out for each other. Why would we want a block watch? Well, it's a way of reducing crime and improving the quality of life in the neighborhood. And doesn't BlockWatch, by be partnering a BlockWatch, you also have, there are certain grants available for the neighborhood. There are registered BlockWatch groups can apply for a grant. There's generally two through the city of Phoenix, a long form and a short form. They could apply for up to $10,000 in grant funds for a registered BlockWatch group. And why would I want to apply? What, what is the advantage of applying for a BlockWatch? What would I use it for? For the BlockWatch or the BlockWatch grant? The BlockWatch grant. The BlockWatch grant, you could use that to basically grow your block watch. You could do newsletters, reach out to your neighbors, helps with websites. Who can start a block watch? Well, any neighbor can start a block watch. They just need to reach out to their neighbors, see if, they're in, if they are interested in starting one. And how many neighbors need to be involved in a block watch in order to start one? You know, you would hope to have at least 10 in your neighborhood, but it depends. Oh, it just depends, okay. And is there a certain parameter or area, uh, two blocks, one block? We, we don't have anything that limits what the area can be. It's what the neighbors choose to be their neighborhood. Um, but you should really choose one that, that is not too large to, to maintain. Okay. And how do you go about applying for a block watch? Okay, it's, that's very easy. Actually, one of the best things you can do is go to the Phoenix Police Department's website, navigate to the block watch page. There's information there. We have a brochure in both English and Spanish. Um, but after you talk to your neighbors, I recommend you reach out to your police precinct to find out who your community action officer is. The community action officer is a liaison between the police department and neighborhood groups. And they could walk you through the exact steps you need to. I'd also talk to them before you start to schedule a block watch meeting so that it, they can attend your first one or one of your first meetings. Now, do the meetings have to be monthly? Do they, can they be every quarterly? Are there any stipulations? They can be as often as you would like. Um, I think later you're going to talk a bit about block watch grants, and there's some requirements about how often you meet to apply for the block watch grants. But for the police department, you meet as often as you'd like. So you recommend a neighborhood such as mine that doesn't have a block watch. You would recommend uh, to create a block watch in the sense of you get to know your neighbors, but you also are looking at items within your neighborhood for safety. Absolutely. You're looking out for your neighbors. You're looking at the quality of life in general, safety issues. We put on various classes throughout the year where neighbors could learn things they could do in their neighborhood to improve safety in general. So is there a block watch advisory board just in case I'm new and I don't know what to do? Can someone help me? Absolutely. The Phoenix, there's the Phoenix Block Watch Advisory Board. It's made up of local block watch leaders from around the city who have been doing this for years. And they're a very helpful group. They have a website, uh, it's phxblockwatch.org. You could go there and get the information and reach out to them. Thank you, Detective Cornegay, for meeting with me, discussing Block Watch. Really appreciate the service that you do and be safe out there. Thank you, thank you for having me out here today. Appreciate it. I will be returning with AJ Marston, who is a Block Watch leader. I'm Councilwoman Laura Pastor, and I'm here with A.J. Marston, a Block Watch leader. Good afternoon, A.J. Good afternoon. A.J., what made you want to start a Block Watch? Well, I definitely wanted to reduce crime in the neighborhood, increase property values, and also improve the quality of life here in my neighborhood. I didn't want to just live in a house. I wanted to live in a neighborhood, you know, know people, solve problems, have fun. And really, really bring a neighborhood together. It, definitely. To, to be able to talk about what is happening on each street, understanding the challenges on each different street, and, and then coming up with solutions, I'm assuming. Exactly. Problem solving is a big part of being a block watch leader. So what are the challenges to be a block watch leader? You know, there's, there's a delicate balance between motivating and informing neighbors as compared to nagging and inciting fear. <laughs> and another big challenge is, you know, we always want more people at our meetings and events. And, and I understand, you know, people have lives, they have their own friends, I get it. But if more neighbors would show up to our meetings and our events, it would motivate the leaders to 
to keep fighting the good fight. So what I hear you saying is that in order to be a long-standing leader within the community, you also need others to support and move forward uh, what is happening in the neighborhood, the agenda of the neighborhood. Like it could be anything from safety in the alleys to uh, certain cars circling the neighborhood to just being, hey, vigilant and let us know what you see on your street. Exactly. Block watch on the street as well as getting information from the meetings that we plan. I don't want to be at the meeting alone sitting with the speaker and I don't want to be at a potluck alone, which is the dish I brought. So definitely making sure that neighbors get involved. If your leaders are planning events and meetings, please go. There's good information and a lot of fun. So, OK. So then at these meetings, what I'm hearing you also state is that uh, there are invited guests from the police department, and I'm assuming uh, your community action officer also is part of these meetings, and you're providing information, educational information uh, for the neighborhood. Oh, yes, the community action officers always show up, they give an update, they field some questions. But over the years, we have had amazing speakers based on the neighborhood. And we just had Marshall Shore, the hip historian, come out and talk about the history of the neighborhood. We had a few people that questioned the plumbing in the neighborhood because my neighborhood is 60 years old. So we had someone from the sanitation department come out and talk to us. Um, in May, we're having the air unit come because the helicopter is always popular when it's overhead. So I'm hoping it turns out to be a popular meeting down here on the ground. So it is crime prevention as well as you were mentioning, just overall information that's useful for residents. Could you please tell me about the Block Watch grant? So yes, the grants are amazing. It has done so much benefit for my neighborhood and all of the neighborhoods that apply for them. Um, I'm just going to ramble about some of the things that you can do so you're motivated. Um, you can get crime prevention items like lights and locks, and you can also get community event items from trash pickers for cleanups to um, paper goods. And then you can also hire caricature artists and balloon artists for events to entice the kids. There's many, many categories. And all you need to do is hold four meetings a year. The grant season opens in November. So definitely talk to your community action officer and your neighborhood specialist to get some information about when that starts. Well, thank you, AJ, for joining me. There's some great information and really appreciate all the work you're doing. Thank you, Councilwoman Pestor. You're, you're such a good supporter <laughs> of our neighborhoods. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I am Councilwoman Laura Pastor in the heart of the city, Rockin' District 4.